Okay, guys, uh, today we are going to be making a piece with some visual contrast. And I told you before we started this project that you could do that in three ways. You could do it with color, you could do it with texture, or you could do it with the form. We're going to do something here that has a little bit of contrast in form, but also has a little bit of contrast in texture. So before I started recording, I rolled out a slab and I flipped it as I was rolling it so that it didn't stick to the table. And um, even though I'm hand rolling it, I'm going to take a moment here to start to compress the surface. And I'm not sure if you can see on the video screen, but I can tell right away that this surface is getting that little bit of like an eggshell coating to it because I'm doing this. That's going to make it a little stronger, a little less likely to crack when I stretch it and be able to hold its form. So I'm also smoothing it out, which is one of the things I want to try to create contrast with here is a smooth surface versus a rough surface. So this is ready to go. It's about an eighth of an inch thick. I don't want to go too much um, thicker than that because I'm going to make like a little pitcher out of this. And I've got myself a ruler. So I'm going to take a moment and make a bottom edge with my X-Acto knife. That I know is going to be nice and square and straight. And then I'm going to measure up. I'm not going to cut this time. And I told you that if you're doing a rough surface and a smooth surface, that you need less of the rough surface than the smooth surface to make things visually balance out. So instead of going 50-50, I'm going up five inches, and then I'll have another area two maybe inches above that. So I've got more of the smooth surface than the rough surface. And when I change the form at the bottom, I'm going to want a little bit more of the clay at the bottom. So I'm going to go up as high as I can here without losing the edge. But since I am going to do a texture, I'm not going to cut that first. In class, we've got things like this roller that I could use to create a different texture above. And it could be as simple as doing something like that. And now I've got smooth versus rough. But you could do things, you know, at home with like forks, or you could layer textures over the top of each other and get some different sort of things going on like that. Maybe mom or dad has like something that they pound meat with to change the texture of your piece. And there we go. We've got two different textures going on now. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to lay down this ruler and see what's the, like the lowest point that I can go and not run into any trouble with like my edge there. And I might even come back at this point and try to smooth some of that back out so that right before I get to the top of my piece, I transition back to a smooth surface. I think I've done a pretty good job there of creating that. So now again, I want to measure up. Seven inches is there. Looks like seven and a half there. So I'm going to make a little mark. Seven and a half over here. Maybe a little bit more than seven and a half. I can work with that. And then I'm going to cut this. And I'm going to cut it with the exacto knife instead of the needle tool so I get a cleaner cut. And then on the sides, I'm going to go vertical. And this time when I cut, I want to cut at a slight angle so that I can overlap and have a nice surface. Do it over here as well. Looks like I can get over to about there. So there's that. I'm going to score up this edge with my fork and the underside of this edge just to help 
the water or slip that I'm using to combine these things. I've got some a little mixture of clay and water here, which holds on the surface a little bit better than just the water. But just water will work too. And again, if I was doing this for real, not just a demonstration, I might give that a little time to soak in so that it really softens up. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick up this slab and I'm going to bend it into a circular shape and I'm going to slightly overlap that surface instead of trying to have them meet right there I'm going to have this edge come a little bit further over than that edge so that it doesn't want to open back up on me when it's drying Get a little bit more of a connection there And then I can do things like I can take a ruler or a rolling pin and put it inside to hold it while I start to push this together. So I got a little resistance there to bond it. And then depending on your taste, you can either leave that seam showing. Sometimes I like the idea of being able to see how the thing was made and other times I want to hide it and make it look like it was all one continuous piece. I'm going to kind of smooth out that inside seam too so that that seam is nice and strong. But now I'm going to take the whole thing and I'm going to flip it. And I haven't put it like on a uh, form like another tube like we did with the repetition piece because I'm going to deliberately change the bottom of this piece. So I've got a circle right now and I talked about having two different kinds of contrast here. I was going to have um, the texture which we've already created but I also wanted to change the form. So I wanted to go from a circle to kind of a triangle at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to score this bottom edge and instead of putting another slab on there for the bottom I'm going to create a triangular form at the bottom which is going to give me something that looks like a little tripod at the base of my piece. So I'm scoring it up and I'm painting a little slip on there right now to start softening it up. Again the longer I let that slip sit on there the better but for the sake of you now having to watch a 20 minute video I'm going to start to make this into a triangle and I want it to be as even as I possibly can so that this side and this side and this side all look like they're about the same sort of length and then what I want to do is I want to gradually start pinching in from the outside edge instead of just squishing the whole walls in I kind of want to work my way in from the edge towards the middle and when I do that as I pinch, it's going to start to go down, which means that when I flip this thing over later, it's going to hold it up off the table. If I just squish it all together, it might be more level across the bottom, but I like the idea of it kind of having almost like little feet. So now I'm working these guys together, even a little bit more, and kind of working on that seam. And what I have discovered in doing this in the past is that no matter how hard I try to get that all the way in at the bottom, it always feels like there's a little bit that's uncovered there. So I solved that problem by taking just a little ball of clay, maybe a little bit more than that, just a little ball of clay. I'm going to kind of flatten it out. I can even do something kind of cute like press a little design into it so it's got like a little something going on. And I'm just going to paint a little bit of slip on here. I'm going to use that little button on the bottom of my piece as a little detail that I can then work into that to hide that. 
Now everything's soft right now. So again, if I was ever doing this for real, I would wait, maybe get my um, hair dryer out and hair dry this so that you know it stiffens up a little bit before I go ahead and flip it over. But for the sake of our demonstration, I'm going to flip it over right now, and you can see how it will stand on those little things. Now I've got two feet here and I've got my seam on the other side. I just sort of lucked out with that. I can make this as circular as I possibly can. I could even find a bowl or something like that that I could press in there to make it really, really, really circular. But since I told you I was going to turn it into a pitcher, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint just a little bit of slip on this front rim. I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to do this left-handed, I guess, so that you can see it a little bit better. I'm going to put my fingers like this on either side, matching those feet. I'm going to kind of squeeze in a little bit. And I'm going to take my other finger or my thumb and finger. I'm going to pull this way towards myself. And now I've got a little spout that I can play around with a little bit more. Maybe add a handle to the other side. And you've got a little pitcher with feet and contrast. The only other thing that I might like to do on this piece, and I'll just mention it um, and show you really quickly, is it's kind of straight walled and I sort of want it to belly out a little bit. So I could take something like a rolling pin and push from the inside out at the base and start to belly that form out a little bit. And when I do, it kind of looks like it's taking a breath and it's got a little bit more elegance to the form. And that is my contrast piece. And write Happy Mother's Day on the bottom and you'll have a gift come May when you uh, forget to buy that card. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.